hey everybody welcome back to the podcast i am so glad to be back with y'all ah my view on the view come on y'all let's get started come on well we're back together again y'all i missed you guys thank you so much for being such a faithful listener to this podcast so i really appreciate you guys so thanks so much for being here now Let's talk about what you saw in the title. Now, I know to some of you, the title may have been a little bit ambiguous. We're going to talk about Anna Navarro versus Tara Setmayer, but not the way you think, or maybe the way it may have seemed. Because the point here is that The View now has two of their most popular hosts. Anna, as all of us know, is one of the most popular hosts they've had in their history. Now, that doesn't mean everyone enjoys Anna, but the majority of viewers do. Tara Setmayer is also one of the most popular guest co-hosts. See, Anna is a permanent part-time fill-in. Tara has never been a permanent host on the show, but she, up until three years ago, was a regular to the show. You want to know why? Because she's one of the most popular co-hosts they've had. Okay, at one time, these two Republicans were the same. Anna and Tara both told us that they were the type of Republicans where they put country above party. Okay, that part is still true. But what a lot of people don't know is that Tara Setmayer has made a major shift politically within the last year. She actually made this announcement publicly in December of 2020. And I know a lot of you didn't know that. So that's why I decided to come on and talk to you about it. Because for the first time in three years, we're going to see Tara on The View Monday and Tuesday of next week. That's November 15th. So mark it on your calendar for those of you like me who love when she comes to the show. November 15th, Monday, November 16th, Tuesday. This is all 2021. For all my listeners who will find this podcast in 2022 and not know kind of what we're talking about, what season the show is in. Okay, so see, people who are excited to see her think they're going to get the Tara that we've always gotten. And to a certain degree, we are. But let me share with you the major announcement that Tara made in December of 2020. Okay, let's take a listen. I, I want to make an announcement. And this is something that I, I've i been wrestling with for a long time. And I have made a decision that after the culmination of everything we've seen over the last four years, after the way that this president has behaved, the way that the Republican Party has um, abdicated their responsibilities and made a mockery of their oaths of office, how the party has turned into a, a party of white grievance, hypocrisy, Apparently, voter suppression is part of the playbook now. No regrets. Authoritarianism seems to be okay. Uh, Conspiracy theories, racism, misogyny, indecency. These are things that are completely antithetical to everything that I believe as a conservative. And everything that I fought for as a conservative Republican for the last 25 years of my adult life. And after last night, I always said that I would reassess my role in the Republican Party, depending on how this election went. I was cautiously optimistic and hopeful that there would be a repudiation of Trumpism. And that would give uh, Republicans like myself, the same ones, an opportunity to possibly rebuild and have a role in trying to root this out and build the party anew. It's clear to me, after almost 70 million people voted for a sociopath, that the Republican Party is no longer something I can associate myself with. I'm done. I'm out. You know, our colleague Tom Nichols wrote an excellent piece in The Atlantic today where he we were simpatico in this in this and he left already, but he reemphasized the point that set almost 70 million people in this country voted for a sociopath. And Donald Trump last night in the White House actually sounded like a a two-bit dictator making declarations about our system and things that are completely against what all of us who are in the Lincoln Project and those of us who were disaffected, never-Trump Republicans, we did not stand for that. 
And we used to be the party that believed in it. We were the party of Reagan, right? Where freedom was only one generation away. We were the ones that were supposed to be the bulwark. We were the ones that were supposed to yell, stop athwart history, as Bill Buckley used to say. We were supposed to be the sentinels in the watchtower. Where has that gone? It has gone to support a sociopath, malignant narcissist who has brought in authoritarianism in a way that it should be dangerous to this country and a threat to our future. So that is something that I no longer want any parts of. I will be an independent until now. I'm still a little C conservative. My belief system and worldview has not changed because the messengers are fallible. But I'll tell you something right now. My fight moving forward is part of this pro-democracy movement and it's to do the right thing because here in America, right still matters. And that's where the fight will be will continue for me. So that's that. That's what I wanted to say. That's my announcement. And um, it's, it's a new day. Woo! God bless her. <laughs> Love you. So there you have it. She is now an independent and has been one since 2020. And so, like I said earlier in the podcast, I think a lot of people who are really excited to see Tara um, come back to the to the set, you know, they're expecting to get the same person they always got. And, and who, who knows? We, we haven't seen the show yet. We don't know kind of how this is going to change her ideology, et cetera. Now, she said there that pretty much she's still the same. It's just that she's just, you know, just she just refuses to be affiliated with the party. So I go back to this point. The View now has two of their most popular Republicans um, on the show who now are very much different in a lot of ways. If you were watching the show Friday, you heard Anna say something totally different than what we just heard from Tara. So take a listen to this and then I'll be back to wind up the commentary. Yeah, it drives me crazy uh, to hear members of the Republican Party, of my party, say we have to move on. No, we're not moving on until we find Are out still everything in that, that happened. Yes, you, I'm still in that party. Are. I'm not going to let a guy who was a, a, a Democrat, an independent, and became a Republican just a few years ago kick me out. I'm not going to let. Be, I'm not going to be kicked out by a person that has no ideology, no principles, and no convictions. Mm-hmm. But the so party, I'm not going anywhere. It's not just him. and and Joy. I like the idea that I can be pro, I can be inside the tent and calling out the people who are unprincipled and who've sold out their values. All right, so I'm not done. going anywhere. That's you know, you have done. Like okay. it or not, uh, I, I are the other people that. like it or not? But it, it drives me crazy when people come on this show or every other show and say we've got to move on from January 6th. It was an attack on democracy. We are not moving on. Anna says she's not going anywhere. So now the view, like I said, have, has has these two most repop popular Republicans they've ever had. One uh, saying, I'm not going anywhere. I refuse to leave the party. Whereas a lot of people can't understand that. Like we heard Joy there. Joy is representative, uh, excuse me, represents the the attitude or the thought uh, of, of many people in this country. Why are these people, some of these people still a part of the Republican Party? Why? Uh, and specific, specifically, excuse me, those like Anna who have you know, who are constantly calling out their own party and members of their own party. There are a lot of people, guys, like Joy, who can't understand why would you still be a part of this? But then you have other Republicans like Tara Setmayer who have left the party. So you understand what I'm saying? The View has a Tara Setmayer versus Anna Navarro issue. And I can tell you guys, and here's where I'm getting to, here's where all of this is coming to. If you don't think The View is going to play on this to this dynamic here, Honey child, honey child, let me tell you, they are. This right here is ratings goal. Now, I don't think Anna will be there Monday and Tuesday. I don't know. She may, um, you know, because we never really know we're going to see Anna. Sometimes she's just there on Friday and then other times, excuse me, Thursday and Friday. And then sometimes she pops up at other times during the week. So we don't know. But for the most part, most of the women who have chemistry tested, she has not been there. Okay. But we don't know. But I will tell you guys something. This dynamic between these two Republicans, because they both represent a majority, not a majority, excuse me, uh, a lot of people in the United States of America, Republicans who've left and they're now registered independents like Tara and Republicans who refuse to leave. And they're going to stay in the party and just continue to call them out, call them out, call them out. I'm going to be watching Tara's performance next week. I tell you, I'm going to be really watching. Now, as I end, I want to share another clip with you guys. 
If you've been watching the show, you know that Sonny's been calling out pretty consistently people like Tara Zetmayer, people like Sarah Haynes. She called out Gretchen Carlson when Gretchen was on there, chemistry testing. People who really secretly, you know, are either Republican or Democrat, but they just don't have the the balls to really just go ahead and check one of those boxes. They just, you know, just recuse themselves and say, hey, I'm an independent. I'm an independent. But they're really not an independent. They really aren't. Uh, She's been calling out that and she's been quoting a lot of surveys and stats and it's made a lot of people upset because, you know, people normally don't like when the covers pulled off of their bull crap. You know what I'm saying? So I want to play this clip and I'm going to end on this. Let's see if when Tara comes there Monday or Tuesday, if Sonny calls her out because she actually is the epitome of what Sonny's going to talk about in this clip we're going to listen to on our way out the door. Let's just see how that goes, how that conversation goes next Tuesday, Monday and Tuesday. And um, let's just see how it all plays out. Not just the dynamic of you got two Republicans, one left, one stay, but you also have an an independent already on the panel Mm -hmm. in Sarah Haynes. And then you have uh, a Sonny Hassan who's been calling out these people claiming to be independents. And then they bring on someone who's just said she's now and she's newly an independent. And uh, let's just see how it all works out. So let's listen to this clip together. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I'm going to let this play. I won't be back. I'll talk to you on the next podcast. Headlines that keep pushing how President Biden needs to woo progressives in order to get his build back better agenda. The, but prominent pollsters claim he needs to get independent voters on board who care more about the economy and the border than raising taxes on the rich or climate change. What do you think? <laughs> what do y'all think? 100 percent. As an independent, uh, more and more Americans are also independents. I think the latest polls show that uh, 41% of voters consider themselves to be independents, Mm -hmm. even though there is no independent party for any of us to vote for, for the most part. 29% Republicans, 29% Democrat. Listen, it always comes down to the pocketbook, I think, for independents. And so they are worried about inflation. They're worried about the supply chain coming in, especially with Christmas and Hanukkah approaching. Um, and, and I think that price tag is, is everything to them. Um, and one of the things was Biden campaigned on being a moderate. Yeah. And he has this history of bringing the two parties together, which I think is what was so popular about him. And he really did woo the independent vote so much more so than Hillary Clinton did. Mm-hmm. And so I think that you're seeing him trying to do that now in the last couple of weeks, mm-hmm. really trying to bring back those skills that he has going between the parties and trying to get a deal done. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. See, I disagree with that. That sounded very Republican of you. No, it's very independent. Um, um, I'm, not, I'm not a Republican. I'm an independent. But it sounded Republican. And let me say this. Um, you know, there, there have been many studies about the rise of independence. And what those studies have found is that few Americans who identify as independent are actually independent. In fact, the, the study found that... Um, people who claim to be independent are actually less inclined to say that they're a Democrat or say that they are a Republican because of the stigma that's attached to it, especially after the Trump era. So they're not really actually changing their opinions or their views on politics. They're simply recusing themselves from publicly identifying well, I'm, I'm partisan. Trying hard.